Okay, the time has come. Clerk, call the roll, please. Schrader. Present. Esri. Here. Berkson. Here. Harper. Here. Kurtz. Here. Petrie. Here. Langenheim. Here. A quorum is present. Okay. Can we have a motion to approve the meet minutes? Second. Second. Okay, got it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public participation. Approval of the agenda. Okay, approve the, excuse me, approve the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the Okay, any comments on that? All in favor say aye. Chair, we have an addendum. What? Oh, the addendum. Yes, we do have an addendum. Item nine, items to be approved by ELUC committee for recommendation to county board. Yes, the agenda and the addendum. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, all opposed. Okay, public participation. Mr. Larry Hall. Larry Hall, uh, 177 County Road 1600E in Southern Champaign County, and I will be brief. I wanted to address very briefly the proposed amendment affecting uh, RLAs and helicopter RLAs that's presented for uh, further consideration this evening. As you recall, I'm sure, at the September 5 meeting, I presented and submitted uh, a proposal by citizens of Champaign County for additional provisions and amendments to the Champaign County Zoning Ordinance uh, regarding restricted landing area and heliport restricted landing area setback requirements. The amendment recommended by the ZBA as submitted this evening is substantially the same as that authorized in the November uh, meeting. There are minor changes made and those changes are reviewed in your, in your handouts. Uh, since my wife and I will be out of town, <coughs> excuse me, for the April 10th scheduled final recommendation date, we wanted to go on record stating we are in full support of the amendment as has been modified that has worked its way back to you and urge your support of the proposed amendment from the ZBA. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a person named Fisher and I unfortunately can't read the first name. Gene, Gene. Gene Fisher. Jean Fisher, 195 North County Road, 1600 East, uh, Villa Grove, Illinois. It's nice to see the ELUC members again. The proposal of case 768-AT13 was brought forth based upon a proactive concern for the protection and preservation of Champaign County Conservation District, the natural resources, wildlife, and human residents of Champaign County deserve to have an advocate in their corner. Only 1% of Champaign County is currently in conservation forested acreage. It was demonstrated during recent RLA hearings by the Champaign County Zoning Board, ELOC, and Champaign County Board that the need not only exists to preserve the vitality and welfare of the habitat, but that the amendments before you tonight needed to be in place years ago. The Champaign County Planning and Zoning Department used other statutes as well as fact-based assessments to make the recommendations before you. As a resident of uh, CR District myself, these ordinances are not exclusive for my family. Every CR resident will be afforded protection and preservation. 
the knowledge and care of today's CR areas are the key to its future success. I'd like to thank, again, the Planning and Zoning Committee um, for their hard, hard work and efforts um, in um, uh, forming these uh, amendments. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The rules are suspended. Go Thank ahead. you very much. I just have one question, uh, and I hope you can uh, speak for all of you. Um, are you comfortable with the timeline in this amendment? Um, as far as the 30-day mm -hmm. waiting, I Things guess, of that nature. Um, well, I know that with the halls being gone, and I guess I wasn't particularly aware of that. Um, I mean, if ideally it'd be nice to expedite things, but if that's the process that it has to take, then I guess I feel that that's what we have to do. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Mark Fisher. Hello, my name is Mark Fisher, 195 County Road, 1600 East, Villa Grove, Illinois. Just one couple of quick things that uh, Jeannie Fisher uh, didn't maybe touch on. Um, in Champaign County, there's approximately 550,481 acres, of which approximately 529,000 acres are being farmed equating to almost 95% of the county. So approximately 95% of Champaign County is used for crop production. <clears throat> Previously, you heard Jeannie mention the 1% of the county conservation and she, how she wanted to protect it uh, from RLA rezoning. I'd like to present the board with a little different perspective, such as 95% of the county, or as much as, is available for RLAs with no rezoning required. Thank you very much. All right. Does anybody else want to speak? If not, we will continue. Any communications? Hearing none. Items provided for information only. 7A, Annual Update, Land Use and Land Resource Management Trends within Champaign County, and 7B, Report on Planning Contract Item, LRMP Priority Item 8.1.9, Monitor Reports and Data Regarding Groundwater Contamination. I believe Mr. Levy wants to speak on that. Good evening, everybody. Uh, in front of you, you have a memo from myself regarding LRMP priority item 8.1.9, monitor reports and data regarding groundwater contamination. Uh, this uh, is part. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it isn't a question, it's just sort of an urging. Um, the agriculture census has begun to dribble out and it's behind the usual schedule uh, due to the fact that the government got um, shut down for a period of time. I uh, hope that as the data pertaining to Champaign County becomes available, if you would provide that to ELUC, a memo would do Highlight that it's available, something of that nature, please. Thank you. Certainly will. All right. Anything further on that matter? Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, the memo here identifies goal eight uh, as a uh, priority item that was covered under the previous year's county planning contract that RPC works through. 
Uh, this one in particular has to do with groundwater and specifically contamination. Now, the LRMP has lots of different policy guidance on groundwater. Uh, 8.1 uh, is a goal related to that. There are uh, policies 8.1.1 through 8.1.5, all, all dealing with this. This is just a kind of a small, small part of that uh, that we're, that we're going to look at tonight. Uh, background information. Illinois has a Groundwater Protection Act uh, that kind of uh, goes through what the state is interested, uh, where, where their stance is on this. So I've gone through and, and provided you with some of that basic information. What I want to talk to you mainly about is the contamination part uh, that this pol policy item was, was related to. On page 14 of your packet, uh, you'll see the, the bold Champaign County groundwater resources below that potential for contaminated land or groundwater. Uh, there is potential in the county. Uh, right now there are 13 toxic release inventory sites within the county, 326 local incident tracking sites, 434 hazardous waste handlers, uh, and those are all in the RICRA uh, Resource Conservation Recovery Act database. That's a EPA website. Anybody can get on it all public information. Uh, we also have uh, IEPA does remediation sites. Uh, we have 33 of those uh, currently enrolled in the program as of August 2011. That was the most recent information on their website. Uh, of those, 20 are uh, considered clean. They've received a no further remediation letter. Uh, and of those, uh, 180 acres have been remediated. At this time, I was unable to find any other locations, <coughs> specific locations where contaminate, where there was contamination that needed to be remediated that would be under county control, really anything that the county could do about it. There might be private landowners, private sites that are, you know, uh, learning about these things, need to, need to do some additional work. But as far as the county is concerned, groundwater uh, or contamination uh, that was under the, the county control, uh, I was unable to find any of that. Uh, there are possibly other things that the county could do, though. Uh, we, we talk about specific, you know, uh, land areas that might be contaminated or groundwater that's contaminated. There's also pathways where uh, certain uh, contaminants might move from one location into, uh, into land uh, or into groundwater. And that's where the remaining part of this uh, heads. Uh, this, this enters into policy 8.1.8. .8. Uh, so a little bit uh, off, off of the topic of this p particular item, but I feel like it's important to uh, uh, look at these uh, in, in a combined fashion. Uh, so I've gone through and outlined, there's a lot of management that already occurs uh, related to, to these potential contamination pathways. Uh, Emergency Management Association uh, does, or agency, uh, looks at hazardous waste sites. They're in control of railroads and highways uh, and any spills that occur there. IEPA looks, uh, is uh, responsible for public water supplies, uh, and they have uh, zones around those areas. Uh, also open pit mining, EPA, stormwater injection wells. So there's a whole list of things that, that the state uh, wor works on uh, in, in coordination with, with local jurisdictions like, like Champaign County. Uh, research and, and education is a strong component of what IEPA recommends for groundwater contamination. Uh, the more knowledge that we have on this, the more that we can, we can learn, uh, the better. Muhammad Aquifer Consortium uh, is, is uh, you know, looks at supply and demand, but they're also in, in the education uh, arena, so, so they're, they're noted there. Some potential contaminants that are outside of the management framework uh, include salt storage, uh, roadway de-icing, de uh, some pipelines, household hazardous waste, uh, and then businesses that may store or use certain chemicals. It's really kind of up to them, and those are where those contamination pathways come, in, come into play. If we have a gasoline tank somewhere located close to a private well, uh, that's, that's cause for, for some concern. Um, and, and, but we don't really know what to do, or I don't personally know what, what the county could or should do about that. So my recommendation is that this, this is kind of an ongoing item. We're going to look at these potential or these contamination, make sure that 
ELUC is aware if we, if we hear of anything. Um, but we can also look at uh, essentially a, do a needs assessment. Does the county, uh, could, could we recommend to the county you know, any, any other actions related to these contamination pathways? Um, and we can, you know, we can do that within existing funds. Uh, it's, not, it's not really a stretch. And that would give us information about wellhead protection programs. Would that be of benefit? Uh, a groundwater protection ordinance, would that be of benefit? Uh, we've, I've identified hazardous waste collection program for that household hazardous waste component. That's something that uh, RPC and Susan Monte, uh, they're already kind of looking at that for an eight county region uh, in East Central Illinois to try and help uh, that not be a potential contamination point, uh, providing a safe, safe place for, for that to be disposed. So, you know, that's something that the county doesn't necessarily have to do anything uh, except for, uh, you know, know, know that, that it's out there. I think uh, you've already been uh, made aware of that, that particular program. So the, the summary of this, and then I guess the last, the last table gives you an idea of all of the public water supplies that are in the, uh, in the unincorporated area. Those are, those are areas where a wellhead protection program uh, might, um, might come into play. Uh, so the, the, the summary is that uh, really no recommendation on remediation, uh, no cleanup at this time, <coughs> but maybe some, some further investigation into uh, contamination pathways, and is there, is there something that leads us to believe uh, that, that some action needs to be taken on that? Uh, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, Andrew. Um, First question he has to do with page 15. And clearly appreciate this matrix that you created for us. However, the matrix um, makes it apparent about the siloing of all of these functions. So my question uh, is, is there a thread that runs through these? So there is, <laughs> I already got the answer. Unfortunately, there, there is not a thread. Uh, it, it's known throughout the groundwater community that these are very uh, different groups looking at very different things. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, in particular for, uh, you know, underground storage tanks, there are, you have to contact the state fire, fire marshal's office, uh, you have to deal with IEMA, and you have to deal with EPA, all, all for an underground storage tank. Uh, you know, they have very specific roles. Those are, have all been set up by the state. Uh, it, is a very, it is a very challenging arena uh, to do anything in. Groundwater is a very challenging arena. Uh, they do want to share responsibility with local jurisdictions, which uh, puts the onus on the county to some degree. We just don't know how, how the county fits in with this, uh, this complex framework at the time, which is why we kind of want to look, look at it more and find out, find out what, if there is anything else. Appreciate that. I have a second one. Um, and mostly because you and I were talking about well hits this, this morning. And again, thank you for the list. Um, on page 18, the second one is one of our problem child children <coughs> in the county. So that um, causes me to have a high level of encouragement that if we were going to begin focusing on some of the suggestions that you have on page 17, that maybe wellhead protection might be sort of, a, you have it at the top of the list. I don't know if that's intentional or not, or just the way it ended up in your listing, but it seems to uh, maybe have a really uh, high priority if we're going to begin focusing on some of your suggestions. Uh, that that was somewhat intentional, and the 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 goal with <laughs> the the goal with the needs assessment is so the to my understanding the tradition in Champaign County has been uh, you know private uh, private property owners are responsible for their wellheads. What this seeks to do is find places that uh, have a higher potential for contamination. You have a household. Uh, you know, it, maybe there are no gas tanks anywhere close by. There's really no uh, no potential for contamination. We don't want to we don't want to do anything. We don't want to burden any anyone with that. It's these areas where we have uh, gas stations and paint 
chemicals and you know all these things that, that are in close proximity to a well, uh, particularly uh, public supply wells that you know, and some of these uh, supply 15 people. Uh, but but those are kind of the points where uh, we we want to identify if if those are out there. <laughs> we don't really know at this point, uh, so we want we want to see and then uh, and then if if there is cause for uh, for further action, for their study, for their information, we can we can move forward. We don't want to go and recommend anything without without really knowing what we're getting into. Thank you. All right. Any further comment on this? All right. Uh, item 8A, minor amendments for the Champaign County Land Resource Management Plan, LRMP. It's a preliminary recommendation for the Zoning Board of Appeals for Zoning Ordinance Text Amendments. Do I have a motion to put that on file? So moved. Second. Any comment? Susan? 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 Yes, I wanted to just review very quickly the four minor amendments and take any questions you might have, or if not, that's fine too. Uh, essentially, these are database kind of items and updated mapping elements that have occurred during 2013 or have become available during 2013 and which impact the data in volume one of the LRMP, the Land Resource Management Plan, and volume two. So. The list of endangered and threatened species in Champaign County is updated every five years so that that new data is available and can be used and is proposed as a minor amendment. Of course, you're probably all familiar that the 100-year floodplain data is now available. It's updated and now in effect as of October of last year. And and then, of course, every year there's changes to the municipal boundaries, however minor, and the one and one half mile extraterritorial jurisdiction boundaries. And, and then uh, as the final minor amendment, the update to the, the maps to include the, the new data and updated 100 year floodplain. So my understanding is that we're gonna hold this for one month for comment, take action on it next month. Yes, ma'am. An information question, Susan. Um, um, unless I've missed it, I don't see any information as to any um, acreage change in this update on the 100-year floodplain map. Has there been an increase of acreage that's included in the floodplain or less acreage or what? I haven't addressed that question before. It's a very interesting one. I, I'd be happy to email you the response to that or provide it at the next month's meeting. Okay, or email yeah. it to, so everybody gets the sure. answer. Great, thanks. Okay. Any further? All right. We have a motion to perform to place this on file, I believe. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Matters closed. Okay, eight. B, case 768AT-13, amend the Champaign County Zoning Ordinance by amending the requirement in section 6.1.3 for standard conditions for restricting landing areas and heliport restriction landing areas. So uh, moved. Motion put this on file. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Place it on file. Okay, 8C, report on RPC planning contract item. LRMP priority item 8.7.4. Develop an information package regarding voluntary establishment of public-private partnerships to conserve woodlands and other significant areas of natural environmental quality in Champaign County and LRMP priority item 8.7.6, develop an information package regarding site-specific natural resource management guidelines that landowners in Champaign County may voluntarily adopt. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Do we have any comments? Am I supposed to call anybody? Andrew. What? Andrew. Andrew. I'll give you a, a brief background on this one as well. 
Mr. Langenheim already went through the, the topics. This is information packets. Uh, the key word uh, is for landowners in Champaign County may voluntarily adopt. This is, uh, this is a bit different uh, approach for Champaign County, providing information about uh, natural resources, uh, stewardship of, of the land uh, for, for landowners, but it's really, and, and it goes back to the, the goal uh, statement uh, for natural resources in the land resource management plan. Uh, Champaign County will strive to conserve and enhance. Uh, this is really meant to just provide information to, to private property landowners, uh, give them a connection if they're coming into the zoning department uh, that, and they're, they're interested in doing something with their land, they're just not sure what uh, they want to do. This, this provides them an, an option, uh, gives them information, really just ties them into uh, uh, department of Nat Illinois Department of Natural Resources, their programs. Um, we wanted to bring this to you to, to, to get your thoughts, uh, make sure you're, uh, uh, you're aware of this. Uh, we passed this through some local resource professionals uh, at the Champaign County Forest Preserve Districts, uh, District, uh, sent it to the Department of Natural Resources, never re re uh, received feedback from them, uh, unfortunately. Soil and Water Conservation District provided comments on these sheets. Uh, so it, it has gone through. We wanted to uh, get their idea on what, what was really key for, for Champaign County. So that, that's where this, this uh, uh, went, uh, I guess, the process this, that this went through. Uh, the implementation of these sheets, again, as I already mentioned, uh, will, they'll be housed at the Department of, Department of Planning and Zoning. Uh, they'll be available for people to, to pick up. Um, uh, and it's really no, no impact on budget except for printing, uh, printing cost. Uh, I, I added in here that, uh, you know, monitoring, monitoring this program to see if it, it's worth uh, the, the limited resource that's going to be put into it. Uh, you know, we can, we can essentially track the sheets, uh, how many, how many they're, they're taken, uh, and then we can get an idea of whether, uh, whether this is making, uh, making an impact, re, uh, getting towards the goal or not. So I'd be happy to take, uh, qu questions on the, on these sheets. Uh, again, we found four landscape types. Uh, woodlands, prairies, uh, savanna open woodlands, and streams and wetlands. Those were the four that were uh, uh, predominant in Champaign County. Uh, so we wanted to, to try and connect people with uh, other resources for those, those landscape types. Uh, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Uh, well, I sent Andrew for questions this afternoon just so he'd have it heads up and get a chance to collect the data. Did I give you enough time or not? Okay, that would be terrific. And that's probably good baseline information for you to be having if, in fact, you want to keep track of if there's any effect. So maybe it wasn't a lost cause. So would you just answer that for everybody? It isn't just for me alone. Sure, sure. I'll go through question by question. Uh, the first question was, how many acres within the county boundaries are in land trusts, uh, and what percentage of this, uh, what percentage of this uh, total, of the total county land is identified as a natural resource? So, first one, land trust, uh, I define that as uh, private individuals, estates, trusts, corporations, mm -hmm. non, and non, or non-governmental entities that have, uh, have these uh, preserved lands. Um, found four of them, uh, let's see, a total of 109 acres, 0.00017% of the county. Uh, and what is that again? Point, point what? Point 0.00017% would be under a, uh, okay. a land trust. Uh, okay. That includes Short Line Rail, uh, Railroad Prairie, uh, Eames Tract, Barnhart Prairie, um, and then the Edgewater Farm Land and Water Preserve. Uh, there are a number more, uh, and then percentage that's identified as the net, well, I guess that's, that's just the percentage. Uh, how many, the second question is how many acres within the county boundaries are in conservation districts? Uh, that would be uh, more the government side. There are quite, quite a few of them, uh, 3,967 acres. 0.0062%. 
And then we don't know the acreage of the Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program. Uh, that's the stream, uh, stream bank okay. uh, preserves. But it's semi we estimate about 72% of our stream banks are enrolled in the CREP program. Um, so that, that's an addition there. Um, there was a question, uh, what percentage of the total county land is identified as a natural resource? That we don't uh, have. We, we don't. We, we didn't, I guess we never. It isn't on any of the maps? Well, we can, we can go back to the, the pre-settlement map okay. to determine from original survey what was, what could be considered uh, that. We've identified what we think are riparian areas and we can look at kind of soil uh, to, to find out what would be a forested soil type. But a lot of that is uh, is now arable land. It's uh, it's agricultural uh, now. So, and we we haven't gone to the extent of defining specific areas that are natural resources throughout throughout Champaign County. Uh, it's really up to the landowner. Uh, you know, it, it's really that. Uh, so so we don't we don't have a percentage of, of Champaign County that is a natural resource. Um, uh, that that. We, we really haven't haven't looked at that. So that would go to uh, one of the other questions I asked, have we gained or lost? You know, I was looking for a, a, a line from which then we could make some judgments. Yeah, so okay. the, the majority of, uh, I have dates for the land trusts when those were, mm -hmm. uh, when those were done. Uh, 1984 was the short line rail prairie uh, 2000, 2001, 2005. So we have I mean, oh, the, those, have, those, have, those, have, those have increased. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Forest Preserve District has increased their uh, their land holdings mm -hmm. uh, over the past past years. Uh, so it, it certainly th those uh, are certainly increasing. Uh, question three was uh, yeah your your question how many acres in the past 20, 10, 20, yeah. 30 years? Yeah. Uh, really difficult. Uh, to to come up with aside from okay. from some of those years that we have, uh, or I guess one one of your questions was how many has been or how much has been taken out yeah. and, and how much added because to I'd them. heard that some has gone out and gone back into productive agriculture I think would be the correct term on that yeah yeah, yeah. and okay. so we we do try or at the regional planning commission we try and track uh, the movement of, of land. Uh, classifications based on our tax assessment. So we do identify those properties, but it's relatively small and we've only been doing it since we've had our GIS okay. uh, capabilities. So it's, we only have a few, a few years going. Um, you know, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources uh, classifies our area as the Grand Prairie Natural Division. They have uh, a habitat plan for, for this area. It includes quite a broad swath of, of uh, central Illinois. It's, it's essentially all of central Illinois. And in there they have goals for acreages, uh, how, much, how many acres they want to see in certain land, land types. Uh, but for Cham it's really hard to tie that specifically to Champaign County. That's just a really, really challenging thing to do. Um, uh, and we, uh, I don't, don't really have a good answer for those questions. Thank you very much, Andrew. I appreciate it. Any further discussion? All in favor of receiving this is please leave it on file. Aye. Opposed? Goes on file. All right. <coughs> okay. <coughs> we now have a series of items to be approved for recommendation to the board. 9A, approval of contract for preliminary engineering report for Wilbur Heights subdivision. So moved. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. No. Oh, what? What? Go ahead. <laughs> For this first one, I'm just here to answer any questions you have. Uh, my sort of my question comment is um, when you and Mr. Manuel came before us concerning Wilbur Heights, um, 
I was delighted to hear some of uh, what uh, you all thought would be a good approach for that area, and it had a lot of sustainable uh, green design to it. When I read the RFP, that wasn't uh, included in the, do the RFP document. So um, I hope that somehow as you have conversations with Burns and Clancy and begin the work out in that area that maybe um, that could be part of the conversational approach to solve some of the uh, problems and the flooding problems out in that area because I was so enthused when I, I, I heard that that was a real strong consideration to how to work through that area. And, and it's a potentially it's really a good approach because of the layout there and how things, how things drain. So that is the only comment that I wanted to make. Okay, yes. Just a real quick comment, just the 2008 contours that they had in with like the RFP, it's obvious that the place is pretty darn flat. So in part, there's no wonder that they have flooding problems. <laughs> okay. Any, any further comments? Are we done now? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next item, request for Champaign County sponsorship of CDAP public infrastructure grant application for construction of sanitary treatment system for the unincorporated community of Seymour. <coughs> second. It's been moved and second. Any comments? Any explanations? All in favor say, whoops, oh, excuse me. Susan, do you have some comments you'd like to make? Maybe a little history about this? Good. Sure. Uh, the, the, it's, the unincorporated community of Seymour has no sanitary sewer district or no sanitary sewer system. And they would like to apply for funding to at least start getting the system in there. Uh, we did an income survey for them and they more than qualified. They have over 76% low to moderate income population. <coughs> and so they, they are in very much need of grant funding if they can find it to do this system. But because they are unincorporated, they need a sponsor in terms of a municipality, albeit a city municipality or a county municipality or township. So they're asking the county to be the sponsor for their application if they decide to proceed with it. And that application would be due on June 2nd of this year if they were to go with the current Community Development Assistance Program grant cycle. Okay. Mr. Langenon. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> This is kind of a different area for us, I think, because since there's no incorporated governmental body out there, um, I'm not sure who's calling the shots out there. I've talked to some residents in the area that have told me in the past that they have a E. coli level out there at the drainage ditch, which everything drains into to the west, I believe, that they have some issues from the standpoint of contamination. And I believe the only EPA has been, put the community under the gun, I, I think, is what I understand it. So I'm not really sure who, who, is, who is the designated individual you speak to. Is there a township official? This you is speak Jim, to? Jim Randall with the Water District, the okay. Seymour Water District, Okay. which is a form, formed district, so. Okay. But it, you're right, there isn't a municipality to speak of, so this would be the water district that's doing the work here. So it, it's incumbent on us that not only are we the, the, <clears throat> the organization or the governmental body that handles the grant process and receives the money, anything, but I'm kind of curious of the liability that we, we have since we're, we're taking it upon ourselves as a governmental body, since there's nothing out there incorporated, what kind of a liability that we have built into this where my concern is cost overruns or anything like that that might be associated with this that maybe the county might have to pick up on because we've stepped up as the authority out there. Is there anything you could comment on with that? Well, unfortunately, I'm not an attorney, but I, I think that this can be done in a way that the county board would not be liable for anything. This is just more of a paperwork formality because RPC would administer the grant if it is received 
it would take care of the funding, it would take care of all of the requirements that fall under that funding. Um, I think that it might be prudent for us to, as if we do move forward, to, to work together with the water district to make sure that there is no obligation on the county as we go forward. Well, obviously it's something, I'm, I'm sorry, Esther. It's obviously something that, that needs to be cleaned up out there. I mean, and I'm sure with the age of some of those residents out there, I, I'd be real skeptical if there was even septic tanks out there or even functioning septic tanks out there right now. I, I would imagine there's a lot of pipes that go direct. So that, <coughs> that, that, that was my concern. I just want to expand my con expound my concerns that I'm hoping we're not biting off more than we can chew with this. In that, the that, that the grant funds and everything will be able to where we'll be able to do this with with the grant money and be able to complete the project. The community itself, I mean, the, the, the water district, the board is also very reticent about applying for funding without knowing exactly how much they're about to bite off because it is such a low income community. And so they're, they're still considering whether they want to apply for this funding cycle because they're not sure if their community is willing to pay for what might be necessary to make this system happen. So it, it's a shared feeling here. Okay. Would we be able to get a legal opinion on our liability before this comes before the board? We can ask the state's attorney and, and see if, if there's time. I know they have a lot on their plates, so, but we can do our best. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay, all in favor of forwarding this to the full board? Say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Motion passed. Item C, amending the 19, the fiscal year for amending the FY14 RPC planning contract to provide planning assistance for the village of Gifford and hazard mitigation planning. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I'd like to speak to that if I may. Yes, go ahead. Uh, after Susan. Go ahead, okay. Susan, please. Thank you. We have the established uh, county planning contract that's already been approved for this funding year, but we have a couple of uh, new priorities that have come into light uh, that we would like to reprioritize some of the work plan items from this year's contract in order to give more time to those to those new priorities. The first one is the assistance for the village of Gifford, which was of course hit by the tornado back in November. Uh, we would like to be able to set aside approximately $3,000 in staff hours toward helping them plan for their future to give them any grant writing assistance or anything that would be helpful to them in, in these times that they're having. And then the second one is that we have an update to the Champaign County Hazard Mitigation Plan that is due every five years and that plan was last adopted in 2010. And so with one due in 2015, Susan Monte has applied for grant funding once again from the Illinois EMA and there is a 25% cost match equivalent to $16,209 that would be done through uh, labor in terms of completing the document. So we would like to deprioritize several items that are LRMP items in order to make way for that potential 25% uh, cost match. We hope to hear this month whether we receive that grant and um, if we do receive it, we will need to provide that match one way or another, the county would. So we're hoping you can reprioritize these items. Thank you. Uh, we all know the disaster in Gifford. And uh, when we received this, uh, this information, uh, John Hall and I sat down with the uh, Regional Planning Commission uh, to see what we can do to help. Um, we felt it was important that uh, this took priority over some of the other LRMP. Uh, issues. Uh, we certainly know that uh, now that uh, FEMA has rejected uh, the uh, expense issue, uh, even though the state may come up with about 25 to 30 million dollars to help in downstate, uh, I would like this, uh, this committee to approve these changes 
so that we may move forward and help the village of Gifford to uh, get back on its feet. Uh, Susan? There's just one more side to this. In this planning contract, besides the LRMP items that we are asking that you deprioritize, you do have 100 hours that are under general request that you can call over to RPC at any time and, and if you need some sort of assistance that we can provide those within that 100 hours. And so we'd also like to request that you identify some portion, if any of those 100 hours you might like to give toward Gifford in addition to the $3,000 we can set aside through those LRMP items. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Can Anything finish? further? What's that? Anything more? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I would hope that this committee would unanimously uh, move forward on this issue, um, other than the fact that we need to uh, take an option on, on what Susan has just requested. So uh, I'd like this to pass uh, showing our support for the village of Gifford and the the need of those uh, who have been terribly displaced and uh, their homes destroyed. Thank you. Yes. Uh, in that case, then I'd like to amend the original motion to You'd add. Like to amend it. What? You want to amend it? Yes. Go ahead. To include Susan's suggestion that we contribute at this point in time 50 of those 100 hours to to Gifford. I would second that amendment. Thank you, Patsy. Any discussion of that item? All in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 All opposed? All in favor of the main motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Matters approved. Thank you. All right. Now, from the addendum, items to be approved by the ELOC committee, et cetera. Item 9D, proposed financial institution for the California Ridge Wind Farm Reclamation Agreement escrow account to be U.S. Bank National Association. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Oh, yes, go ahead. Microphone. I never heard of U.S. Bank National Association. Is that a bank? Yeah, it's actually the fifth largest bank in the country, believe it or not. There's been so many consolidations, and the names of banks have changed so dramatically. John, you have a little bit more to say towards that. You may remember a logo that is just simply U.S. Bank. Yeah. That's, that's the company. That's the <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, any further <laughs> discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <laughs> Proposed escrow agreement for the California Ridge Wind Farm, so item 9E. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that's passed. Now, monthly reports. A, December 2013. Is that anywhere in the House? <laughs> Motion to place on file both the monthly reports. Second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. I Wh oh. Whoops. Whoops. I have a question to add. John. Um, and uh, this may not be uh, the correct time, but we're talking about your reports. And... Um, you are minus a planner for now, or for a, a number of months, and I just wanted to um, ask you if you would just s sort of give us a sense of how that has affected your office, and is there something in the pipeline, not only for that replacement, but I believe you have a possibility of two interns. Um. We did advertise for interns. I'm still considering the uh, applications because we didn't get one application from a master's candidate student, which is what we typically hope for. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the general response was pretty small. Uh, and frankly, I've been underwater with other projects uh, at the same time. Uh, so the interns, we haven't gotten any on board yet, but uh, there are a couple that I still want to talk to. Do you, do you need any help broadening 
microphone passes. Do you need any help broadening the base where you're getting the information <coughs> to? Because I'd be happy to help with that if, if you need. Okay, I can. That might be helpful then. Uh, regarding the lack of a planner, it really hasn't been a serious problem so far. The uh, zoning, you're, you get a great deal with your zoning technicians. They can step up and fill in for a planner for almost anything, and that's what they've been doing, and so it's, it's been working very well. As warmer weather gets here, in fact, this week we took in two applications that were the kind of applications where we told the applicant that we don't think the zoning board is going to like this, but it, you can still request it, and so they're going to go ahead and request it. And what that means is the lack of a planner is probably going to become okay. more of a problem. And um, I was hoping to start advertising for the associate planner in mid-April, or mid-March, sorry, so that it could carry through until spring graduation. But in fact, um, I talked... I want to check with the county administrator about possibly um, reviewing that associate planner job description. Um, I, I think the county would be better served by reviewing that job description um, so we could get more experienced people. Um, and so I don't know if we'll be advertising as early as mid-March. I doubt it. Um, we might even send some planning cases to the RPC staff if they have time to help us out during this interim period. Um, so you, you'll hear more about that in the future, but that's how it's going so far. Okay, again, if I can help with that, I don't mean rewriting it, but when you're ready um, to get it into Illinois APA and the national conferences mid-April just as a timeline for you to be thinking about. Okay. No more? All right. Is there any other business? Well, we just, go. just pass it on file, Ralph. Yes, just a second. I'm sorry. The chair wishes to report that he feels lousy and he hopes it isn't contagious. <laughs> we need to vote on the... Need to vote on that. Need to oh, vote. Let's have a vote on item 10. As you can see, he feels lousy. <laughs> All in favor of the month... Placing the monthly reports. Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed. Same side. Okay. Do we have <coughs> any closed session minutes around here? You do have a recommendation from the state's attorney um, stating that under the parameters of the resolution 7969, there are no minutes that are subject to review. The closed session minutes almost entirely concern personnel and issues and therefore should remain closed. If I understood that, that doesn't require any vote on our part. Yes, you need yeah. to vote to maintain the closed session minutes as closed. Okay, let's all in favor of accepting that report. I move that we accept the recommendation to maintain the status quo, I guess you could say. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. All right, the items 9, A, C, D, and E are to go on the no. consent agenda. No. no. Ten. Ten. I purposely voted no, so would stay off. So oh, excuse me. The a, legal opinion. A, B, a, B, D, and E. Excuse me. Is that right? He said A, C, D, and E. She voted no on B. Nine B. Nine B. Yes, correct. Right. Just so there would be time for the legal D and e. opinion. Yeah. Okay. A, C. Mm -hmm. okay. Dare we adjourn? I think so. Do you have a ride home? John.